Hi everyone, welcome to this jumpstart tutorial for the new Fiedler Audio Mastering Console version 2. Mastering Console 2 runs on Windows and Mac as a standalone application and is the first truly complete mastering solution for Dolby Atmos. By that I mean you don't need any other applications like the Dolby Atmos renderer, the album assembler, or any DAW at all. You can do it all inside Mastering Console. When you open Mastering Console, it will scan your system for any VST3 plugins you have installed. You can use your VST3 plugins to process your stereo mixes if you like. Now, if you don't want the Mastering Console to scan every time it starts, just switch off automatic scanning by deselecting automatic scan at start here. Let's first have a look at the session menu at the top left. In this menu, you'll find the usual suspects for managing your session, as well as importing and exporting files. You can import Dolby Atmos ADM BWF files at either 48 or 96 kilohertz. You can also import stereo files in WAV or AIFF format. You can export ADM BWF files, re-renders of your Dolby Atmos masters from stereo all the way up to 9.1.6, binaural and Apple spatial audio, as well as your processed stereo masters. And finally, we have a downsample option that lets you batch downsample your 96 kilohertz ADM BWF files into 48 kilohertz ADM BWF files. Next to the session menu, we have the gear icon that opens your studio configuration settings. Here you can select your audio device and the routing to it. You can also add some room tuning if it's needed. And finally, you can rescan or make changes to your VST3 plugins list. The monitoring controls can be found in the top right corner. Here you can select your speaker layout, your headphone format, and also activate head tracking if it's available. Head tracking currently works with Apple headphones on Macs supporting that feature and with the Supperware head tracker, which can be attached to any studio headphone. If you are on a Windows computer or an older Mac where Apple spatial audio is not natively supported, you can still listen to spatial audio just without the head tracking. This is a really powerful and unique feature of Mastering Console since it lets you preview how everything will sound on Apple Music with spatial audio engaged, even if your computer doesn't natively support it. Above the meters, there's an on-off switch for additional render headroom. The limiter built into Dolby Atmos Render emulates the soft clip limiting that will be applied during the encoding process. We've decided to provide a way to not trigger this limiter by reducing the volume of the signals going into the renderer by 60 dB and raising the renderer's output by 60 dB again. We do this because the limiter can easily change the sound of the rendered Atmos mix if it is above the usual loudness norms. With this kind of gain staging, the renderer behaves in a linear way so that you can comfortably work on your sound and leave the loudness correction to the very end of your workflow where it belongs. After loudness correction, we recommend switching off the additional headroom for a final quality check to really hear how everything will be encoded. Please note that this switch also works for the limiters in the renderers used for re-render export. If you want the re-renders to sound as they would be rendered from the encoded Atmos mix, you'll need to switch off the additional headroom before export. The Mastering Console has three main views that are accessed via the buttons at the top. These sections include the Timeline, the Editor, and the 3D View. You can also switch between these views using the number buttons 1, 2, and 3. Let's check out the Timeline and import some Dolby Atmos ADM BWF files, as well as some stereo mixes. We can do this by clicking Import in the session menu or just dragging and dropping our files into the Mastering Console. Mastering Console automatically distinguishes between stereo and ADM BWF files and places them as clips into the appropriate tracks of the timeline. Next to the Mastering Console logo, you'll find the playback controls. Most of these are self-explanatory. The button with the stereo symbol switches from monitoring the Atmos track to listening to the stereo track. 
This is handy in cases where you want to quickly check a stereo reference against an Atmos mix of the same song. Note that you can only monitor your Atmos track or your stereo track, but not both at the same time. Stereo mixes can sometimes be louder than their Atmos counterparts, so the small knob to the right of the stereo button lets you adjust the playback volume of just the stereo track. This lets you level match the two mixes for easier comparisons between them. Below the Mastering Console logo, you'll find a Batch Mode Album Mode switch for the two edit modes in the Mastering Console. Batch Mode is designed to do what the name implies. You import a batch of files to edit and process them as a batch. Technically speaking, there is no relation between the imported files when using Batch Mode. And so Mastering Console processes each one of your files individually with no regard to what comes before or after it. In this mode, you can reorder your clips on the timeline manually by dragging and dropping them in your preferred order. Album mode is designed to create albums from your imported files with gapless transitions and or crossfades, if desired. After switching to album mode, you may have noticed that white triangles become visible in the timeline. These are region markers. Regions define the parts of your timeline that will eventually be exported. By using these markers, you can split clips into various parts or join clips into one export region. Now, you might be wondering why batch mode doesn't have these region markers. That's because clips and regions are always the same when working in batch mode. This makes markers unnecessary. When you switch to album mode, two more buttons become active. These additional buttons help you in quickly editing the clips and regions on your timeline. In album mode, Clips can generally be moved freely on the timeline. With ripple mode, you can move a clip and all subsequent clips together as a whole. Ripple mode has four settings. One is off, one for Atmos clips only, one for stereo clips only, and one for both Atmos and stereo clips. You can change ripple mode also by clicking the R shortcut key on your keyboard. When snap mode is on, every movement of the things on the timeline will snap to the points of interest. These points of interest include clip boundaries, region boundaries, fade starts, and the playback pointer. These movements include not only moving clips themselves, but also dragging the region boundaries and the clip handles, which we will take a look at in a moment. You can also toggle snap mode using the T shortcut key on your keyboard. If you try to move clips to a place where they cannot be located, they will snap back to their original location. This happens, for example, when there's a point on the timeline where three clips overlap, or when one clip is completely covered by another. If we look at a clip, you'll notice each clip has four handles. Two on the bottom for cutting, and two at the top for adjusting fade in and fade out. Holding the command or control key down while dragging the fade handles vertically lets you change the shape of the curve. And right-clicking on the fade handles lets you choose between normal and S-shaped curves. If a clip is shorter than the file it contains, you can move the file position inside that clip by holding down the command or control key and dragging the waveform horizontally. Each clip has its own master channel. When you select a clip, be it Atmos or Stereo, the corresponding master channel is shown to you in the bottom left corner. You can process a selected clip with plugins in the master channel. For Atmos, there are OBAM plugins, which process the entire Atmos mix with up to 128 channels. And for stereo files, you can use your full arsenal of VST3 plugins. Atmos clips have an additional master volume fader sitting after the master channel. Since regions define the parts of your timeline that will be exported, you'll need to measure the loudness of these sections and make sure that they conform to whatever loudness standard is required for your export. To do this, just click on the Measure button to bring up the Loudness Management window. Here you'll see a list of regions on the timeline. The workflow here is to first measure everything and then adjust the integrated loudness if necessary. These adjustments can be done automatically by using the controls in the bottom left corner. If loudness levels are shown, they can only be trusted if the loudness state level of each region is green and says up to date. Once loudness adjustment is finished, we can tackle the true peak. 
You can either manually reduce your Atmos Clip's master volume to match the delivery requirements, or you can use Mastering Console's ultra-transparent True Peak Limiter. This is a very unique limiter as it detects the peaks in the signal used for your loudness measurement and adjusts the entire Atmos mix accordingly to make sure that you meet the requirements, all while staying minimally invasive. You can auto-engage the limiters per region using the controls on the bottom right corner, or do that manually. Let's close the loudness window and select a region to see more parameters of its limiter. Here you can adjust the target limit that should not be crossed, the release time, and the format, which in most cases should stay 5.1 since this is usually the format used for loudness measurement by the streaming services. If you'd like to hear what the limiter is taking away from your signal, you can do so by clicking the Delta button. On the editor page, you can make adjustments to each channel of your region. For example, you can activate or deactivate a channel, mute or solo it, set its binaural mode parameter, add a description, and assign it to a group. Yellow channels are beds, blue channels are dynamic objects, and purple channels are silent. Silent channels can be switched off globally by clicking the button All Silent Channels Off next to the Silence Threshold field, where you can set the desired minimum threshold. When you're working in batch mode, you'll only see the big list on the left, since clips and groups are always the same. If you're working in album mode, you'll see two additional narrower columns which represent the clips in the region selected by the top left dropdown. Above these two narrow columns, you have the transition selector for selecting a pair of clips which transition within the region. If you're transitioning from one clip to another, the binaural mode setting of your channels have to match to make sure that each clip sounds as it was intended even in a gapless album. These two columns let you check that all channels from your two clips have compatible binaural modes. If necessary, you can reorder the channels to create matching pairs using the Move buttons. If you intend to create a gapless album, you'll need to make sure that you have seamless transitions between the regions on your timeline. The Mark Transition Differences button toggles the highlighting of possible issues in red so that you can take a closer look. Open Transitions List opens a window showing the list of those transition issues. Finally, there are various preconditions for gapless encoding of your ADM BWF files on streaming services. One of these preconditions includes a certain channel layout, which can be enforced in album mode with the Enforce Gapless Layout button. The gapless indicator next to the session sample rate display shows you whether the regions in your session can be gaplessly encoded or not. On the right side in the editor, you'll find the controls to change down mix, trim, balance, and timecode start. These values can only be adjusted for regions. The imported clips are read-only and are not changed. If you are in batch mode, then regions and clips are the same, and you can of course edit them on a per-clip basis. You can save and load settings as presets, and if you want the same settings for all regions session-wide, just click the Copy to All Regions button. Use the Reset button to reset the settings of your selected region to those used in the first clip of that region, and finally you can change the list of available groups here. The 3D view gives you a great visual overview of what is happening at the current playback position. A small version of the timeline is shown at the top for your reference. You can see the channels of the region at the current playback position, and with the hide and focus buttons, you can select what you want to see. You can change the 3D viewing angle by click dragging the window, and reset it back to its original position by Alt or Option clicking the window. When you're done with your work, you can export any region of your timeline by clicking Export in the Session menu. By default, all regions are selected to export as ADM BWF files only, but you can select any combination of ADM BWF, multi channel re render, binaural, Apple spatial audio, and even the stereo track. You can change all settings in a column by command or control clicking the respective button. 
After making your selection, click Next and select the folder where you'd like to save your exported files. Now Mastering Console will begin exporting your files. And that's it for this one, folks. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss any news, tips, and updates. There's more to come, so I'll see you in the next one.